Our session for today, Socratic Active Learning, SAL, which I didn't even realize was initials as well. Uh, flip class method for increased student engagement in remote and face-to-face -face modalities. And I will let uh, uh, Rosemary Rayhill and Professor Salvador Laporte continue with the introductions. Okay, so I guess I'll begin. Um, I just shared my screen, so that should be loading up for everybody right now. So this is the title that Judy, and thank you very much, Judy, for that Judy shared um, with us. I'd also like to thank the tech team over at COSI because there's a lot of behind the scenes activity as well. So thank you in advance for all of your contribution to this session already. Um, so I will um, just reiterate that we are here today to share some unusual components for student engagement and sort of an intersection of a chemistry classroom and a French classroom. So that's where um, we have this unique combination that we're talking about. So I'm Rosemary Rayhill, and I'll just introduce myself quickly. Um, I'm a senior instructor of French, so un peu sur moi, excuse my French. Um, I focus a lot on student engagement, as we all do, in face-to-face, -face, remote, and online modalities. I'm also a great advocate of students studying a foreign language as a minor or major and an avid recruiter because I, I really see the importance of, of the foreign language study. And I'm also the Club Francophone Advisor, so if anybody's interested in some Club Francophone events, they can contact me as well. So um, I would like to um, talk about our collaboration. So we have Salvatore Lepore here, and uh, we have a collaboration that actually began in a French classroom when I first started teaching at FAU. Um, Salvatore is an avid learner of foreign languages with a bachelor's in Italian, which he earned while being a professor <laughs> and doing research um, here at FAU in 2016. But in 2013, that's when he started his journey in French, well, at least in uh, one of my classes. So um, it was a great debut that semester. Wonderful having a, a colleague in class and um, our collaboration has continued since then with many discussions about pedagogy. And just a few months ago, we were talking about, you know, our classes and how things were going and Salvatore brought up um, what he was doing in these large chemistry classes, the Sal technique that he was using and the passion that he expressed and the enthusiasm were, were such that I said, we, I think we could take this show on the road and we could perhaps do a presentation <laughs> for the COSI. So here we are and I'll let um, Salvatore tell you a bit about himself. Well, great, thank you, Rosemary, and also want to thank Dr. Judy Summers uh, for for this opportunity. Uh, uh, so, I'm, I'm as Rosemary mentioned, I'm, I'm a professor of chemistry. I've been here for a while, and uh, I do research in the area of medicinal chemistry, and it's something I'm I, I absolutely passionate about, and it really puts the fire in the belly uh, when it comes time to teach and contextualize the the, the concepts that I'm teaching to students. Uh, when I say students, uh, sometimes I end up teaching these uh, rather large sections of organic chemistry one. They can be as, as big as 350 uh, uh, students. Uh, and uh, and so uh, uh, from uh, I left the pharmaceutical industry after working several years there uh, because of my passion for teaching and for mentoring. Um, and I'm also, as, as we'll come out in today's presentation, I'm also passionate about organic chemistry uh, as a language, and I think that that's going to be one of the themes that, uh, that, that that comes out here as to how it can be one way that it can be taught. Absolutely. So the format we have for today is sort of a question and answer conversation. So you'll notice in bold on the top the the question and then uh, the answers, but we'll also be having this this dialogue at the same time as providing you with this visual support. Um, so, uh, talk a little bit about the SAL and the flipped class, please. <laughs> yes, uh, so, uh, so uh, SAL, is, that's my nickname, SAL, uh, but it's, uh, it really, really worked uh, because uh, it, it, it does involve something that I would call Socratic dialoguing, uh, in learning through questions. And uh, this is something that works, uh, really only works in my mind with a flipped class. And when, when I say flipped class in, in, in our in organic chemistry, what we've done is we've taken 
uh, much of the learning that used to occur in class is, as it is typical of the flipped classroom, put it onto Canvas. And so we have textbook passages that we want students to be reading, some, some videos, uh, mostly some beautiful, lots of mini videos that my colleague, Dr. Elijah St. Germain, I'll be mentioning him a little bit later in today's presentation, had prepared. Uh, selected homework problems that are based on those readings, based on those videos, and then, of course, the extra credit quiz that, that happens after all of that. And so in the class period, you know, we can spend some time developing ideas together. There's going to be some problem solving, but there's also this idea of developing the concept of learning the material through this dialoguing. And dialoguing also means that I ask a lot of questions. Uh, and in order to bring the students out of their shyness and out of their, uh, you know, timidity, and we can talk about ideas and, and have them see just how they make sense and how they naturally develop. Yeah, and I would like to highlight here about the textbook passages for reading that I think we all encounter this situation of students. You know, we anticipate that they'll be reading the pages assigned, but that reading isn't always happening. So this sort of uh, is another uh, step, another level mm -hmm. to encourage that reading to happen and sort of uh, demystify what was read in the classroom setting. You know, you know, uh, one thing I would say, Rosemary, is that you can, you know, the saying, you can bring the horse to water, but you can make them drink. Uh, one of the things, the goals of the sow is to give the thirst. So that when we do bring the horse, when we bring the student to the knowledge, they will have a little thirst for it and, and do the reading and do the learning. Absolutely. So what motivated you to develop this classroom technique? Uh, okay, that's a great question. And one thing that I, I should say is that uh, it didn't happen overnight. Uh, uh, I had some conversations with a former PhD student, now uh, just a, a, a great instructor here in our department uh, of organic chemistry. And he and I talked about the, the Socratic method and uh, about how it might be useful in, in learning and student uh, improving student learning outcomes. And uh, so um, the pandemic, uh, it really was the, the, the impetus. It was the thing that pushed me to, to finally take that step and, and, and to do the Socratic act of learning. And so uh, it, it really fast tracked uh, this, you know, the, you know, the the, the SAL approach, which we'll talk about here in, in a moment. It's, it's a silver lining as it were, because it finally uh, really, really made it uh, so that I, I had to try it. Yeah, the need was much greater when you have 350 students with just a little black square on the screen. That could be quite yes. intimidating, I would think, and Very really wondering point. what's going on. <laughs> yes. So you implemented this for the first time in an upper upper division class. Correct? That's right. That's right. And so the, the, it was really good that I didn't just start off with with 300 students, but instead, uh, when I first implemented it, uh, it was in the fall of 2020, and uh, uh, the class uh, cohort was I think it was eight students, give or take a student. And so I had we were doing Zoom lectures, and I said, please, everyone, just keep their cameras on, their webcams on. And it turns out that that course was already partially flipped. So I had a pretty, pretty good canvas component. Online uh, quizzes, uh, homework assignments, readings, this sort of thing. And so I just changed my lecture style as opposed to just saying. That you traditionally presenting ideas, I instead. Uh, uh, had the students help me develop the ideas through the asking of a lot of questions. And here the, the group was 8, 8 students. And I would just systematically go through and engage each one of them as best I could and by asking questions and moving the ideas forward with their input. So you realize that this number of eight students is a is a manageable amount of students to yeah. have participating at the same time. And yeah. and I teach foreign language, and typically we will have maybe 20 students, which is quite a bit more to manage, but um we, you know, we have other ways of managing the groups in small parts, but you can definitely get a lot of work done with that many students and have them all feel like they're interacting in the process. Yes, yes. yes. <clears throat> so the idea is to engage all, all, all students yeah. in the learning experience. <laughs> yes. And I love this term you yes. said when we first had our discussion, this reality TV feel. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, you know, there, you know, there's this concern I've always had, and and it's something that I I had struggled with 
uh, as, as an instructor uh, is the idea that all of the students that, that sit in the front row, of course, they're there, they want to be engaged, they participate, they answer questions. So I call that the, the, the front row effect. But what about the students sitting in the back? So in the pandemic situation where I, you know everything was being done with the, the, the live online lectures, I, um, I created a, a microcosm and then had others of where a certain number of students, about five to seven, would turn on their webcam. We would engage in this uh, Socratic dialoguing. And for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, while the rest of the class uh, paid attention and looked on and watched their classmates get engaged in this process. And so, so it was reality TV because instead of just seeing this professor teaching, uh, which maybe to some is intimidating and they see their classmates uh, helping the professor develop the ideas. And so in a way, it's like, it, like you know, I do think it's got a reality TV feel to it. Absolutely. And how do you feel that this had, what effect did this have on the audience? Let's call them yeah. the audience since we're talking yeah. about reality TV. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, to, to be sure, uh, uh, when students are responding to my questions, they're speaking in a youthful language. And, and language is we're going to we're going to see here in today's presentation is an important theme. They're speaking in a youthful language. Uh, they're using a jargon, a vernacular that uh, that, that, that 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 they are comfortable with. Uh, so I believe that it makes the ideas uh, translate and transmit more easily. They're more. They're just more. Uh, they're more. Um, uh, it just goes over more smoothly. Also, it's nice to see your classmate. Uh, you know, just watching them in, in the hot seat and, and, and you're just out of curiosity wondering how they're going to do. But and also, if you see that your classmate is up there on the webcam engaging in dialogue and doing a pretty good job, and many of them did a great job, they're thinking, hey, well, if they can do it, you know, I can do it. And so it, the intimidation factor of the material goes down. And in organic chemistry, that is a problem that students mm -hmm. go into it with preconceived notions about, oh, this is a tough course and I, I, you know, I can't possibly do well. And so the more we can do to minimize that, that feeling of being overwhelmed or intimidated, the better. And that, that really um, speaks to the foreign language classroom as well, because students have a similar, we call them effective filters in uh, mm -hmm. just speaking in another language. Day one of French class, what am I doing speaking French? I'm done. This is my first day of class. So there is, a, you know, I'm sure in all classes an equal intimidation factor for different reasons. But yes, definitely seeing your your classmates do it in this. this I say the ceiling didn't yeah. fall down on their head, so I guess it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, just kind of taking that chance. You know, Rosemary, there's one thing I learned from your class, being your student, is that there are students of French of different levels, and mm -hmm. somehow you made everybody feel comfortable. The more advanced speaker was able to, you know, practice his or her French, the less advanced, and and so it just became a, a, an environment where people could could experiment, try, and learn, and and uh, and so this is in science, it's a similar idea. Similar idea. Yeah. And like your your front row effect or your students in the back row, it's the same same principle. So um, obviously there must be a very active chat as I think there <laughs> is in this session too. I see them popping up once in a while. Good so good. how about the chat? Okay, oh. okay. So this was a surprise, and and uh, uh, you know I'm not a real social media kind of guy, so so you know I. I didn't expect this, uh, but but what happened was we had opened up the chat feature uh, to allow those that weren't in the the cell group in doing the dialoguing to participate through chat. And to my pleasant surprise, it was frenetic. Students got in there and they just answered the questions that I was asking to the cell participants. Uh, and uh, and we're, we're gonna we're gonna see in just a second an excerpt of the chat. It is it was frenetic, and so I. I had a experienced graduate student oversee the chat to sort of make sure steer it in the right direction, make sure that there was no misinformation. Uh, but this became a parallel course, and it was also a beautiful measure of just how students were accepting uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, uh, being edified by the cell dialoguing. 
So I'm, I'm seeing like this sort of analogy of the master chef and you're the master chef and you're, <laughs> you have students participating, different groups coming in and out. You're the TV producer. You know, these students are coming into their sal session. These other students are turning on their camera Then the chat going on. So all of these coming together in a, in a beautiful recipe, a beautiful yes. crescendo of learning really. Yes. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so we could take a look at the chat. Look, I got a chat here, right? So well, I, I want to take a note of the, the short time span in between some of these posts. So with I can only yeah. imagine um, how many posts there must be in a in the yeah. in an 80 minute there, class. Yes, they're pages. I, I downloaded the chats and uh, it, some of them uh, are, are just a dozen pages of just lots and lots of students uh, uh, participating, answering questions, speaking organic chemistry. And here we see, for example, from Darby, here's line number five, Darby, yes, the 1S is not hybridized, it's pure S orbital, but is there a 3P orbital? So these, these young folks, new to the field of organic chemistry, in this chat are showing me that they can speak organic chemistry. And so for the first time in a room of 350 students, whereas before they may have been doing Facebook or Snapchat or something, now they have something there where they can focus maybe their nervous energy, get into this chat, comment on what's going on in the uh, in the Socratic Active Learning uh, group, and all the while be shepherded by an experienced graduate student to make sure that, again, that there's no misinformation and so on. But you can just see, you know, they're talking about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and uh, and asking pretty deep questions. And again, other students are seeing this chat going on, seeing the level of excitement of their fellow classmates, and therefore, you know, it, you know, draw something from it, and they then then participate. So it really is like an auto catalytic thing. You know, the more they see, the more they want to do, and so it increases excitement, engagement. It makes the classroom more modern. Let's just say a little more to the students' liking in terms of the reality TV, you know, metaphor. Mm -hmm. So, so kind of a chemical reaction, if I dare say, <laughs> like um, an auto catalytic reaction. Yeah, right. But um, would you like to kind of con would you like to have a little conversation in organic chemistry now? Uh, so, so like for example, uh, you see my board uh, in, in the background. That's the that's the the written language of organic chemistry. It's very symbolic to many of you. That may look like hieroglyphs, Egyptian hieroglyphs, but it, it's it's a it's a uh, a, a discipline, a field that is rich in symbolism. One of the things that actually attracted me to it, but it's also a spoken language. And students, uh, in order to be able to master it, need to need to understand the spoken form. So, for example, I might say to a student, "There is the the non-bonded electrons that need to access the anti-bonding orbitals on the backside of the carbon in order to split out a leaving group to form a more, you know, thermodynamically stable carbon-carbon bond." And this is what we would call a nucleophilic substitution reaction. So that, that that's all English, uh, but students, uh, even at this sophomore level, are learning to speak this form of English that I call organic chemistry. And by talking it and by using it, uh, using the you know initially more in, in a sort of a, a groping fashion, a limping fashion, but eventually get more and more fluency. Uh, they gain they gain uh, uh, you know, confidence, and that confidence leads to more participation, more desire to read, uh, and and hopefully, you know, we're, what we're seeing so far is improved student outcomes. And they develop their own organic chemistry language skills along the way. Yes, and this is something that I, I can't stress enough that it's not that different, if I may say, from the language classroom. That in order to in the best way to learn a language. Is you have to use it. <laughs> and so, use it. And so, I mean, you know, what's happened heretofore, despite my best effort, is that I'm a language user of organic chemistry and I speak it. Obviously, I speak it well because it's my thing. And students, they just hear it and they think, oh, he speaks it well, that's good for him. But they're not, they're not accepting it, they're not internalizing it. But when I'm in dialogue with them using that language, I find that they pick it up pretty good, pretty well, yeah. and they speak it back. And so, like in a language classroom, we're having, we're having the increase of organic language skills through the dialoguing. 
just and like Rosemary's commenting about, oh my gosh, it's the first day of French class and here I am speaking French. What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> Very well, speaking true. of pictures, speaking of pictures, if, if you may not be able to see it too clearly, but behind Salvatore on the board, there's the there's the symbolic side, there's the alphabet of the yeah. language as well. So you're joining, yeah. and I know you do this in your class as well. You're you have the dialogue going on, but you're also using visual to um to aid the students as well. Yes, the idea is the as we all know, it's active learning, getting the students to use the language and uh if you don't put them into a small group where one can, you can play one off against the other and have lots of questions, they tend to sit in the back and just make this more of a what can you do for me situation, more of a more of a passive thing. Or they play with Facebook, where if we give them a place to you know, to, to channel their nervous energies like the chat and others yeah. go into the SAL group, uh, then we start to make the classroom more active. You already mentioned that the chat was very energetic and it was like a course within a course. And then yes. we also talked about um, how to use this feature in the future. So if you want to comment yes, yes. a bit more on that. Uh, yes, you know, uh, I am now, uh, and, and I, I know there are others probably uh, in, in, in the, uh, the viewership here who have experienced this chat effect. Uh, I am now in a face-to-face -face, uh, modality. I'm going to encourage my students to bring their laptops, their their iPads, their smartphones to class and encourage them to, to use the chat feature. Uh, because I believe what's happening is that as I do the Socratic active learning, so it, it so even in person, I'm going to do this because I find that it really engages uh, the students, especially those that are a little more shy, but are they're comfortable with chatting. And the questions come out, students answer each other. There's a lot of peer, peer teaching going on. It's really just a wonderful melange. And, and it's not all just coming from the professor, which is better. And, and so this chat is something that I didn't anticipate. Uh, and, it, and, and it's turning out to be quite a blessing in terms of student uh, learning outcome. That's fabulous. And we, we have mentioned the idea about speaking in organic chemistry, like speaking in French or speaking about speaking in organic, organic chemistry, but in a, let's say a youthful register um, for sure. So That's if true. you want to talk a little bit more about that as well. Yeah, you know, I think I think that uh, it, it's important uh, to, you know, just to, just to emphasize that it, it's a language uh, and, uh, and to realize that a language needs to be practiced through speaking. And, uh, and so giving enough students an opportunity to do that, be it through chat, which everybody can participate in, uh, and, or through the SAL, which is a little bit more tense uh, and, and a little bit more, I would say, um, uh, you know, more uh, uh, tense, tense in terms of content. Uh, but this is uh, something that hopefully whets their appetite and makes them believe that, hey, I can speak this. Now let me go and, and, and do that home study, homework, uh, because now I feel more confident I can, I can make it work. Yeah, and you mentioned here about gaining courage, and I say it's worth repeating. Fellow mm -hmm. students listen to their classmates speaking organic chemistry and gain courage. This is very, very important. So yes. to have the opportunity to do it in the written format, and then that can lead up to the spoken format as well. Yes. Sort yes. of a stepping stone. Yes. And, and, and you know, the thing here is that uh, all of this came because, uh, I, I would say, it because uh, uh, I... You know, using ideas that have been mastered and have been pioneered by, uh, you know, our, our professors across campus, like you, Rosemary, you know, and uh, so I just want to, I want a, a shout out to all, um, all of the, those in the viewership to, to, to uh, you know, embrace some of the teaching techniques uh, developed by other colleges and by other disciplines. And I, I, I can see, for example, potentially using uh, some of the methods developed in the art department, you know, given that organic chemistry is a, a artistic, there's an aesthetic quality to it. So um, it, the goal here is to reach the student and to use creative ways to do it. And, and uh, uh, I, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to more of this uh, collaboration, innovative collaboration. Absolutely. And you're also appealing to a lot of different types of learners as well through all of these different methods. Good point, good point. 
So then there's the, um, how do we do this? Is it complicated to set up? What, what was that like? Yes, yeah, this is the beauty because I'm not, a, you know, I'm not a, an IT genius by, by any means. So, but basically, uh, if you ask uh, a group of five to seven students, uh, you, I pre-assign groups at the beginning of the semester and uh, uh, students then in that group are asked to appear at a certain date and time. And I have the TA remind them. So actually, we remind them in the chat. Oh, you're coming up. You know, make sure you turn on your webcam. And and that's it. They just turn on their webcam. And I have my electronic tablet, uh, which simulates a whiteboard. And so I continue uh, engaging that new group in, in development of ideas through the Socratic dialoguing. And then that group, when when 15, 20 minutes goes by, they they, they go away, a new group comes in, again, with, with help, with some reminders from the TA at the course. And this, this goes on, uh, usually three groups, uh, each each uh, lecture period, class period, uh, and that's it. So do students, they do have the opportunity to participate perhaps more than once in the semester. So it's sort of also, mm -hmm. they get they get comfortable more with this technique. Okay, I'm on, you know. Yes, sort of absolutely, absolutely. So, so we're talking about, in a class of a uh, couple hundred, they may only come up three times, but they have to chat where they can they can really participate. In my small class of eleven students, everybody participates every time, and so you know it is a higher quality experience to be sure. But you know this approach makes sure that no one gets left behind, no one's in the back row ignored, and 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 this approach you know because it's a very uh, randomly selected. You know, and so it's each cell group is in a microcosm of the class. Um, and it, it, great, this is the, uh, this is the uh, a place where we talk about that. Um, because of that, um, every student gets a shot to participate, to be, to, to feel like they can help move the ideas forward. Uh, that's very critical. Uh, and this is avoiding what I call the front row effect and only the more, ver you know, vocal, uh, stronger students, uh, in the past used to participate. Now everyone, everyone gets to participate. So with the lack of the physical classroom, there is no physical back of the room. There's just the camera right. off sort of back <laughs> of the room. Absolutely, absolutely. So this is the camera on. Now you're no longer in the, the uh, virtual back of the room. Mm -hmm. um, so the randomization factor, you mentioned that. So if you wanted yes. to elaborate on that as well. Yeah. I just say, you know, because I think I've already kind of covered this, I would just say that uh, there are a lot of tricks to doing this. You could use, for example, Excel. Excel has a random number generator, and it's, it's a nice way to uh, make sure that uh, that the students are selected truly in a random fashion. But if you don't want to do that, you can just, you know, since you don't know the student at the beginning of the semester, you can just hand pick, you know, six, seven students and break them up into groups by hand. But the important thing is, is that it, that uh, I, I believe is not to purposely take a strong student and put it with a, a less strong student. Like try not to do that. Just make it random, and uh, and then you, your group is going to be hopefully uh, representative of, of the class composition in terms of its strengths and weaknesses. So I I did notice a question that popped up that I think is potentially answered. But if you can do this in a, a class with 350 students. If you have less than that, you know, you can see that the implementation, it's, it's the same, but students might have even more opportunities to be in the, um, in the limelight, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, um, so, yeah, how do you handle the grading and how do you get them yeah. motivated to participate? <laughs> this is one of my favorites. Yes, this is, yeah, this okay. So here's the thing. When we set this up, uh, I, I, when I set it up initially, we, we did not give any any uh, credit for their participation. Um, and so I did notice towards the middle of the semester that the attendance would, would, would flag a little bit. And the truth was when a few people didn't show up, I, I put a general call out to the class that they would like to join and always we filled up. So there's always, they're excited, but some people are you know, a little shy, a little bit worried about participating. So what I did was I sent out an email and said, in the next cell, uh, next in the lecture, lecture period, uh, I want all South groups to bring their furry friend with them. I want to I want to meet your dog. I want to meet your cat. And I never had problems with attendance again for the South. Everybody had a dog or a cat. I got to know their names. This was marvelous, and and honestly, it made them feel more comfortable. 
And after just spending a few seconds, you know, greeting their dog, you know, seeing them do a trick or something, um, it, it just warmed things up amazingly. And uh, and so so that was the carrot uh, in in a, in a you know a non face to face you know a, a modality. But uh, in in the lecture hall in, in a face to face, uh, you know, probably I would make it so that sal participation would be the the, uh, the requirement in order to take an extra credit, in order to engage in the extra credit quizzes, which I think would be enough inducement to have them uh, participate. Or, or they could maybe share a picture when they're in the cell group, share a picture of their pet, introduce the pet in the giant lecture hall, larger than life. <laughs> I like it. I like it. You be you would be surprised how passionate students are about their their pooches. Oh, and and I loved every second of it. So it made me. I love dogs and cats, so it made me it made me happy as well. That's wonderful. I just love that. Love that. I can see Judy does too by your reaction to that. <laughs> Fabulous. So um I had asked you if you wouldn't mind sharing some of the spot feedback yeah. on on this uh Sal. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, this was the first time I think that a lot of students had encountered this type of uh, classroom experience. So the, the initial response I saw was pretty enthusiastic. It's a, because the, it's a it's a an interactive, fun uh, experience. Uh, I, I got a, I got a lot of good feedback. Um, there were a couple of uh, of, uh, of negative uh, uh, you know negative comments more along the lines of they wish that more material were covered in class. And that's I think this is a bit of a rebellion against the flipped class idea. Uh, a lot of students still. Feel that tr the traditional mode of teaching in class and introducing material in class is, you know, they're comfortable with that. Uh, but uh, most students absolutely love love this. It was it was uh, and and it was really um, uh, it really warmed my heart because the goal here is if they like if they like it if they feel less intimidated, then then they're more likely to go and do the reading and 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 the self learning that occurs with the flip flap the class format. Anytime we can get students to read, it's definitely <laughs> definitely accomplished something. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we just have a, a little a couple more slides here and mm -hmm. some of this has already been mentioned, but yes, if you yes. wanted to just comment on these last two slides yes. and then we go to questions, that would be great. Yeah, so so just that my uh, the approach that we're I'm going to take next time I teach a, a 300 student class, so I'm going to keep the front row empty. That's going to be for the for the Socratic active learning group. And I'm just going to have them rotating in, basically just sitting nearby, and and the three groups are going to come in in 15 minute shifts, and uh, we're just going to have like a like a you know what we call like an interactive theater situation where I'm going to talk with them, that the rest of the class is going to look look on, and also be involved in chat. And that's how I'm I'm hoping to translate this into a face to face modality. Yeah, and we talked about your vision, which clearly this came out of a wonderful vision to continue to innovate, like we were saying early, earlier on in the presentation. Anything else yeah, you wanted yeah. to say? In, in yeah, I just want to say that curiosity leads to reading, and uh, reading is, I think we can all agree that that's, this is where le the lifelong learning occurs. This is how, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the 21st century employee, you know, maintains employability. They have to be able to learn on their own through reading. And not everything is going to be spoon fed to them. So we want to teach students the the power of that reading. And I think the best way to do it is to pique their curiosity. So I want them to walk away thinking organic chemistry is fun. Learning is fun. Reading is a good thing. Absolutely. So if there isn't anything else you wanted to add, thank you, Salvatore, for all of that information yes. and all of your innovations. Did I just hear you? I think I heard you. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Go for well, it. Well, I knew it was one of the options. It's a million. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, hi from Massachusetts. I'm really excited to be part of this conversation. Uh, Sal and Rosemary, thank you so much. And of course, Dr. Judy, thank you as well um, for inviting us in on this uh, conversation. So, Sal, my question for you, I have one question, if you don't mind, on from the faculty perspective and one from the students. So, first of all, when you prepare from the faculty mindset, when you prepare, it, do you do you recommend or do you typically take a more formative um, uh, aspect 
Do you look at it formatively or are you really focused on those solid objectives that you've got a target or is it more flexible in terms of like the, the formative aspect? Uh, if I understood your question, Lisa, are you asking, um, do I have a series of concepts that I want to have, uh, that I want to develop in a lecture? Yes, that that and are you are you taking uh, feedback from today's lecture and applying it to the next lecture? I see. I understand. Um, not so. Yet, only I use the feedback in real time. In other words, if if I'm presenting an idea and I'm, I'm having students help me present it, and I realize that the overall level of the South group is not where I thought it would be, mm -hmm. then right there on the spot, I shift gears. And, and take a different approach. Uh, and, and so uh, the goal there is to make sure that there is understanding and engagement. It, even if I don't reach the level of the concept that I'd like to, that I'd like to, I want to make sure that they're engaged and that they're understanding on some at some level. Mm -hmm. I, and so it could be that in the, maybe in the next go around later in, in that lecture or in the following lecture, I may readdress that concept now at a slightly higher level. Now that I know that the class is, uh, you know, was introduced to it, you know, uh, with, with they had some preparation based on my previous dialogue. But but I'm careful not to have too much of an agenda because a lot of that's already online. Students mm -hmm. can access it, and I just want to make sure that they're that they're getting, for lack of a better word, that they're getting it. Yeah. That they're getting it. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can. I definitely can see the value of flipping everything around and just having a really robust conversation with them and letting them drive that yeah. conversation. That gives you yeah. a lot of a lot of feedback as to their depth yeah. of uh, understanding. Uh, what advice do you have for a faculty member who is interested in applying this method? I, I would like yeah. to share some of this information with my faculty here mm -hmm. at Cincy College. But mm -hmm. I don't want to drown anybody, and I don't want to scare anybody. Away. <laughs> okay, so so I think I think there has to be a there has to be a flipped class format in place, and that I think there are probably a lot of resources for that. But it has to be it has to be robust. There has to be a good online presence. You have to have something for students to go and do on a daily basis to learn the material, be it readings, be it videos, be it quizzes, be it something. There has to be a good flipped class in place. Then the second bit of advice, I think the only other bit of advice I would say is as an instructor, I, I take notes on what I'm going, what I would like to say. I think about the questions. So I have the dialogue. I talk, I talk to myself. Yeah, <laughs> Basically, yeah, yeah. And I have a dialogue. <laughs> I have my own dialogue. And that may take a few hours for every hour of lecture for you to, to, to think about how you might pose this in the form of questions that a student can access, can understand. So you have some really good lecture notes, but not lecture notes in the sense that you're just explaining everything, but rather ask questions to yourself mm -hmm. and think through about what you might ask. It, it does, you, you wanna have an instructor that's a little bit more experienced. I wouldn't do this as the, I wouldn't make this the very first mm -hmm. <laughs> teaching assignment and have a little bit of experience uh, uh, in, 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 again with the flip class. Great, thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. And, I, and, and with that and, and a number of other things that you have mentioned throughout this, I am, in, am extremely impressed with the pedagogical foundation that you have built this whole thing on because it's based on student success, which is why we're all here. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, I would have a suggestion for, for Lisa um, because in the foreign language classroom, it really is a flipped classroom where it really is a very student focused yeah. classroom. Mm -hmm. So if you have colleagues, um, at, at your university who are teaching foreign language, you may want to, you know, discuss with them, you know, what, what are they doing? What kind of activities are the students doing? And maybe even experience yeah. what that kind of classroom is like. Has anyone attempted this in an asynchronous, uh, format and I'm not. I, I'm having a hard time visualizing how that might work, but I suspect it would in some way or another. Discussion board, a discussion board in Canvas, I guess. I, I think, back to Flipgrid. Yeah, I think you know if one could envision. I, I guess there's a question of uh, authorization. If one can envision the taping of 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 uh, these uh, uh, Socratic active learning sessions, 
so that students then could view them, you know, after the fact and 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 see how the ideas are developed by their classmates or by others in 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 a similar boat as they. Uh, that that that's a possibility. I'm not sure about the, uh, you know, Dr. Summers would have to tell me about the legalities of that. I'm not sure, but if it is allowable, it could be amenable to the asynchronous. Approach. The question I believe you asked is, do the students? have to prepare questions in order to engage in the Socratic dialogue? With regards to the quantitative aspect of your course, students do not like anything that has mathematics. Do you How do I handle that? Yes. That's a, that's a, good, that's a good point. Um, in, in organic chemistry, the quantitative aspect is, 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 not, is not as great, I think, as, as in the business course. Um, I, so I had, that's a great question. Um, but I think that when I do work through a quantitative based problem, um, I have my pad and I, I just have students help me. I have to turn on their calculators and, and we just go through it. And I, I'm careful not to put the, not to move this too quickly in the right direction. Obviously I've shepherded it. Um, and uh, so I, I think the goal, the goal is to work fewer problems and for students to feel comfortable, to feel that they can do it. It may be a little psychological because yes, you're pushing it forward. Yes, you're making sure that they get to the right answer. And yes, that's not what they're going to experience when they do this on their own. But the goal is to make them feel like they were able to do it and, and, and to do it as a team, which is certainly the way problems are solved in the real world anyway. But then when they go home and try it, they're more likely to, to actually try it, to give it a shot. Uh, when, but of course, there is the, the, the you know, the, the Canvas uh, flip course part of that where they have to go and do it. But the problem is a lot of them don't. I agree with you, they don't want to do it. But if you can just give them a little bit of confidence because they feel like, hey, I solved the problem in class and I actually did it, they, they may do it. They may give it a shot. And I'm, I'm not talking about the A students. I'm talking about maybe more like the C or D student who maybe has a, has a little bit of an issue with confidence. If you can just bolster that a little bit by the in-class activity, you will have accomplished something. And I'd just like to add to that on the, when you use the whiteboard, um, students can also participate with you, correct? Live in the- Oh, so, yes. So if you're doing something quantitative, right? <laughs> oh, Rosemary, you're a genius. Absolutely. Um, the way uh, and I use Zoom, and Zoom's a little better for this, but uh, with my whiteboard, a student can actually access my whiteboard, so the two of us could write together. And so this is very interactive, maybe even more than you could do in class, where you have to get a student to come up to the board, and that's a little intimidating. But by doing that, students are helping me work the problem. Uh, we don't do as much quantitative. We do things called proofs, you know, organic chemistry proofs. We call them mechanisms. And they help me with that. And that's something there, little by little, they gain confidence that, that they can do it. Uh, and I think, I think that's, if we, can, if we can accomplish that in class, they're more likely to do the flipped class portion at home. <laughs> yeah, and, and Lisa's comment is, it's like, uh, like having, our, having training wheels on our bike. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. <laughs> this has just been a delightful discussion. Thank you both so much. What a what a great um, correlation and combination of ideas and thoughts and and stimulation. I will let everyone know that we will be sending the information out um, to to everyone. But uh, it is my great pleasure to thank Rosemary and Sal both for uh, for being here with us. And and for sharing with us in such an open uh, a dialogue, uh, interactive way. Thank you. And so, uh, thanks to everyone for your comments in the chat. And uh, we will look forward to hearing how it works for you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today.